Learning about our ancestors often helps us understand ourselves. Adam and Eve, our first ancestors, were the highlight of God's creation, the very reason God made the world. But they didn't always live the way God intended. Through their mistakes, we can learn important lessons about the way God wants us to live. Adam and Eve teach us much about the nature of sin. When the Lord God made the earth and the heavens, neither wild plants nor grains were growing on the earth. For the Lord God had not sent rain to water the earth, and there were no people to cultivate the soil. Instead, springs came up from the ground that watered all of the land. Then the Lord God formed the man from the dust of the ground. He breathed the breath of life into the man's nostrils, and man became a living person. Then the Lord God planted a garden in Eden in the east, and there he placed the man he had made. The Lord God made all sorts of trees grow up from the ground, trees that were beautiful, that produced delicious fruit. In the middle of the garden, he placed the tree of life and the tree of knowledge of good and evil. some commentary from the Bible. It says, We can hardly imagine what must things must have been like to be the first and only person on earth. It's one thing for us to be lonely. It was another for Adam, who had never known another human being. He missed much of what makes us who we are. He had no childhood, no parents, no family or friends. He had to learn to be human on his own. But fortunately, God didn't let him struggle too long before presenting him with an ideal companion and mate in Eve. Theirs was a complete innocent and open oneness without a hint of shame. One of Adam's first conversation with his delightful new companion must have been about the rules of the garden. Before God made Eve, he had already given Adam complete freedom in the garden with the responsibility to tend for it and care for it. But one tree was off limits, the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Adam would have told Eve all about this. She knew when Satan approached her that the tree's fruit was not to be eaten. However, she decided to eat the forbidden fruit. Then she offered some to Adam. Not a good thing. At that moment, the fate of creation was on the line. Sadly, Adam didn't pause to consider the consequences. He went ahead and ate the fruit. In that moment, a small rebellion, something large, beautiful, and free, was shattered. God's perfect creation. Adam was separated from God by his desire to act on his own. The effect on a plate glass window is the same whether a pebble or a boulder is hurled at it. The thousands of fragments can never be regathered. In the case of Adam's sin, however, God already had a plan in motion to overcome the effects of the rebellion. The entire Bible is the story of how that plan unfolds. So, that is the thing that we wrestle with, is the introduction of sin, where it takes us, the fall of mankind, and how the story of Adam and Eve and all of the key players in the Bible unfold. You know, when we talk about sin, I cannot help but think about the current environment that we're in that keeps so many people... I'd say in conversation and somewhat on edge, and that very thing is politics. And as it relates to the fall of mankind and sin, you know, when Adam and Eve sinned against God by not being obedient, and sin is introduced in the world, so often I hear that, you know, people will say, well, how can you support somebody who is full of wrongdoing or sin or lax in uh, morality and that person in that conversation being President Trump. And so, so often I say, you know, I refer back to the Bible. Number one, you know, we have a king, if you will, or a president that that is part of the system that presides over the people and that we should uh, support the president in ways that we can but certainly pray for the president that God uses him in a way 
that advances God's kingdom. And so the, the, the Lord will use people in ways that you cannot imagine, in ways that, that, that is not known to humans. But I'll also say this, is that people will say, you know, they'll, they'll criticize the president often. And, you know, certainly some of that certainly is warranted. But also use the example in the Bible where, you know, Mary of Magdalene was an adulterer and the law called for her to be stoned at that time. And Jesus said, those of you without sin cast the first stone. And no one casted a stone because they knew they were not perfect. They were not without sin. And Jesus said, where are your accusers now? And he says, you know, they're not Pretty much, they're not uh, stoning you, and, and nor will I. And he said, go and sin no more. So when Adam and Eve, you know, they were tempted by Satan, the serpent, and, you know, they did the wrong thing. Um, that is the beginning of the fall of man, if you will. And from that point, sin is introduced into the world. We as humans have never now been perfect, and God thankfully has come down in the form of, of a human and his son Jesus Christ to be able to be the sinless individual that dies on the cross that makes a way for you and I to return to God and that is the only way you can return to God because you are a human and in your humanness you are not worthy enough you are not holy enough you are not pure enough clean enough you can't do it on your own it's about God's grace it's about his mercy it's about all of the things he offers you and that is the story of the bible that you need to learn and really understand and there's so many people that fail to recognize that so no matter who you are whether you're the pope or the president of the united states of america or a doctor lawyer a teacher a, an astronaut anyone we are all sinful and fall short of the glory of God. And we should be thankful that the Lord made a way through his son, Jesus Christ, who died on the cross for our sins, that one day you and I can return to him for those that have believed this in their heart, that he rose again the third day and confessed it with their mouth. And they've turned away from their sins and they continually repent you will one day be saved.